Okay, percentiles and quartiles. Here's our simple formula for figuring out a percentile. We take the number of values less than x, divide by the total number of values in our data set, and multiply that by 100. So for instance, if you're trying to find, um, you got a 73 on a test and you want to know what percentile you're in, you would count up all the number of test scores that were less than 73, divide that by the total number of test scores in your sample, let's say your class or whatever, and then you would multiply that by 100, and that would give you the your percentile. So it's basically the percentage of people that scored less than you on that test. Here's an example involving the Chips Ahoy cookies. We've got a sample size of 40. We want to know what the percentile is for a cookie with 23 chips in it. So we count up all of the cookies in our sample that had less than 23 chips, and there ends up being 10 of them. So we do 10 divided by 40 times 100 gives us 25. So a cookie with 23 chips is in the 25th percentile. It's just that simple. Don't make it any harder than it is. You're basically just finding the percentage of things less than that data value. So what percentage of your sample has a value less than the number you're testing? Here it is in a formalized uh, formula if you're trying to work backwards, right? Before we were trying to find a percentile for a given number. Now we're trying to figure out what number in our data represents a certain percentile. So, you know, what is the 25th percentile of our data? Or what is the 43rd percentile of our data? And this is going to lead us right into quartiles because Q1, or our first quartile, is going to be the 25th percentile. Q2, the second quartile, is our median. That's 50%. And then Q3, the third quartile, is our 75th percentile. So quartile like quarters, we're just taking our data and we're breaking it up into four pieces. The first 25, right? Then the next 25, which gives us 50. The next 25, which gives us 75%. And then the last 25 brings us all the way up to 100, right? So we're taking our data and we're cutting it into quarters. And so this formula tells us if we're given a quartile, right, we're given a, a percentile that we're trying to find, and we know how big our sample set is, then we can solve for the locator, the position, which number in our set of data, right? Is it the fifth number? Is it the twelfth number? Is it the forty-seventh number? Tells us where to look for the quartile. So then we can say what the value of the quartile is. Okay, here's our little decision tree for being able to solve these things, and it might seem kind of complicated, but if we look at some simple numbers, we can uh, work through it and see that it's not too bad. Okay, so first we need to compute the L, which we're basically computing percentiles. So we're going to do the 25th, the 50th, and the 75th, because those are the percentiles we care about, right? This is Q1, Q2, or our median, and Q3. Okay, so let's take a look at these simple sets of data up here. And we'll very quickly just do 25% of all of them. That's what I did here in Excel. 25% times there are six of them, then seven, then eight, and then nine. So there's my 1.5, 1 1.8, 1 2, and 2.3. Okay, so that was this step. So now we look at that number and we have to make a decision. Is L a whole number? Well, for all of these numbers, this is the only one that's a whole number. So let's look at the no choice first. If it's not a whole number, we need to change L by rounding it up to the next large whole number. You notice that it says rounding it up. It doesn't just say by rounding, because rounding would tell us we could either round up or round down, depending on the decimal. Here we always round up. So 1.5 rounds to 2, 1.8 also rounds to 2, but 2.3 rounds up to 3 instead of what we would normally round down to 2, right? So we're always rounding up. And then the next step is the value of uh, PK, right, the percentile that we're looking for, is just that new L that we came up with. So we came up with 2, so the second number in our set is the value we're looking for. Same thing here. and third number here. Now because my sets are simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc, etc, then the, the number 
in the set is also its value, right? So it's not, we didn't find the value, we found the placeholder. We we're looking for the second number in the set, and the second number in this set is 2. The second number in this set is 2. And then here we're looking for the third number, which is 3. Okay. Now for this one, where we didn't have to round, because when we just did this formula, we got a whole number, then we go this way on the decision tree, and it just says, the thing that we're looking for is halfway between the number we just got and the next number. So we look right between the second and third number. So here's the second and third number and we take the midpoint between those two so we average them and we get 2.5. Alright, so these would be our 25th percentiles or what we would call our first quartile, Q1. We could do the same thing over again to find all of our medians, but we remember to find medians, it's very simple. We just look at the set of data and cut it in half, right? There are six numbers here, so it's halfway between three and four. That's where we get three and five. There are seven numbers here, odd, so the midpoint is the four. We're back to an even number, so halfway between four and five, there's 4.5, and then back to an odd number, so five is right in the middle. Okay, we could do the same process to find our 75th or our Q3. First thing we do is take 75% of our data. So 75% of 6, 75% of 7, 8, and 9, and then we have to follow our de decision tree. Right? Again, rounding up, rounding up, rounding up, no rounding whatsoever. Right? Once we round up, that's the answer we're looking for. So the fifth number, the sixth number, the seventh number, and when we didn't round here, Right, it's halfway in between it and the next. So the fifth number is five, right? The sixth number is six. The in between the sixth and seventh number is six point five, and the seventh number is seven. So there's our Q3, our third quartile. And then you might think, boy, this is a big pain in the butt, especially if there were a lot of numbers. And yes, if there were a lot of numbers, you'd be in trouble. It would take you a long time to kind of figure these things out. So luckily we can use uh, technology. The problem is, is that technology uses slightly odd formulas to calculate these things. And when we have smaller sets of data, like these examples, you'll see that we get a lot of wrong answers. So you should really only use the technology for um, large sets of data. For small sets of data, you should be able to do this by hand very easily. So here is how Excel calculates quartiles. It's very simply just a, a function called quartile and you tell it you know the range of numbers to look at and then it does some rounding and you can see that it has some weird errors involved. It thinks Q1 is 2.25 and it thinks Q3 is 4.75. When we just found from our formula it should be 2 and 5. So you can see both of those are wrong. Again for this set of data, it got them both wrong as well. 2.5 and 5.5 instead of 2 and 6. And it got these wrong. And this is the only case where it got it right. So now you're trying to maybe hopefully see what I mean by these cases. Here we had a, an even number of uh, data values. And then when you cut it in half, we had an odd number. Right? Here we had an odd number. And then when you take out the median, we have two odd halves. Here we have an even number that when you cut it in half you now have even, so that's the difference between these two. And then here's an odd set of numbers that when you take out the median, right, you've got an even number. So those are the four kind of styles of sets that you, families you could think of, of sets that you could have. And unfortunately Excel gets 75 percent of them wrong. The only time this works, the only time Excel gets it right, is basically when um, the your n, your sample size, is a multiple of four plus one, right? So this is nine, which is eight plus one, and eight is a multiple of four. Seven here is six plus one. Six is not a multiple of four, so it's not going to work there. I know you're thinking I'm never going to remember that. So my advice is just don't use Excel. Okay, if you used your TI-83, the graphing calculators, it's the exact opposite. It gets 75% of them right, but gets 25% of them wrong. <laughs> so, 
again, it gets this one wrong. So it's the exact opposite. The one that Excel gets right is the one that your calculator gets wrong. <laughs> so you can either, you know, pay attention to your sample size and know when your calculator works and when your calculator doesn't work or don't use it. I just do these things by hand. It's the safest way to always get your quartiles correct. Okay, so let's finish off what it's talking about here that we've already seen, right? The first quartile is just that that breakaway point, that kind of the the limit the cutoff where 25% of your values are below it. And then the second quartile, that's your median. That's the same thing as your median. So you've got 50% below. And then the third quartile is just 75% below. Here's a nice visualization of what I mean by when I say it divides your data into fourths, right? This represents your lowest data value and your highest data value. So this blue line is all of your data. Cut it into fourths, 25%, 25%, 25, etc., etc. So Q1 is the cutoff where 25 is below. Q2 is your median that has 50. Q3 is right there, 75. So you can see how that works. Okay, so that's that's percentiles and quartiles.